Today we're focusing on the best settings for Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer zombies and Warzone Urzikstan. One thing to keep in mind is that if you do load into a different option, you may have to set up the settings again for the entire mode. And if you go into the settings, you can kind of see how the outline of these individual menus look. When we go ahead and switch over to Warzone, they look a little bit different. They're not like that grayed out. They're almost a little bit more transparent. So if you notice that maybe something feels a little bit off, make sure that you're putting the settings for all of the different game modes. So as we jump into the setting, I wanna give you a heads up that I watched like 14 different videos on how to optimize the settings to best suit my individual setup. And keeping in mind that everyone is gonna have different setups and, and part of that is gonna to lead to slightly different settings, depending on how overpowered your computer actually is. I'm currently running a 3080, which some people is gonna say dated, I should have a 40, whatever. At the end of the day, it still gets the job done. If you have anything better or worse, it's okay. You can kinda of tune your settings to best suit your needs. I do play at a 1440p resolution. That is my monitor. It goes up to 240 refresh rate. I don't really generally get that unless I'm playing multiplayer on the battle royale or zombies. I'm going to get probably around 150 to 180, depending on what part of the map I'm in. It could fluctuate quite a bit, but in general, it's a pretty consistent frame rate. Uh, in terms of brightness, I moved it up a little bit. Uh, some will say 55, some will say 60, uh, or just leave it at default 50. I've bumped it up to 53. So a lot of these settings you will be able to just copy through and then I'm gonna give you a guide on how to figure it out for yourself if you do wanna after the fact go and change some of the individual settings. Overall, the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is gonna be dependent on whether or not you your GPU or your CPU is bottlenecking you. In my particular case, the GPU is bottlenecking it a little bit, so I have it on on. If there was the CPU bottlenecking it, you can actually switch it to on plus boost. So it will depend based off which one's doing that, and you can't really find out in the menus. It'll be in game. So right now at the top, you can see my GPU time is four milliseconds, which is better than the CPU time, but in game they swap. That's why I have it on on so that it can actually help out on the GPU side. At least that's my understanding of how that system works. Efficiency, it doesn't really matter. You can go ahead and put this to custom. This actually has pretty much no impact on that individual settings when it comes to frame rate or how the game's gonna look. Uh, V-Sync gameplay, you could turn that off. V-Sync menus, doesn't really matter. Custom frame rate, you can do unlimited. Focus mode, 90, doesn't really matter. And then we got high dynamic range, we have off. That's our first page when it comes to display. Quality is where it gets a little bit more nuanced, really depending on the build and how ugly or good you want your game to look and whether it's worth sacrificing an extreme amount of frames for a marginal difference or you can lower it to get extreme boost for a marginal difference in how it looks. So you're not really negatively impacted on the ugly side. Is it gonna look ugly, but you get like one frame better or vice versa? You kinda gotta figure out and pick and choose some of the things. Uh, I use dynamic resolution off. My resonant resolution is exactly what my monitor is. And then I have upscaling sharpening. There's a lot of these great tools. At the end of the day, the one that I've been using for a very long time, and I think that the majority of people should generally use is the Fidelity FX Cast. This will help with a little bit of sharpness and it doesn't have an extreme impact on your frames. And it looks makes your game look way better. You can go ahead and put this between 40 up to about 90. Sometimes for me, when you put it a little too high, I don't like the sharp like the sharpness when you have the sharpness too high so i generally only keep that between 40 and 60 for my own personal preference the ray tracing path reconstruction i have that off vram scale if you have the top of the line you can go ahead and raise this but this uh lowering this can actually help with some of the stuttering um so that's why i kind of have it right around 65 if you put it at 70 and you notice still more stuttering on some things try lower 65 60 and kind of see where that goes and then you should be able to notice difference variable rate shading this one will help um and this one you do have to restart your game for it to actually notice it so it's not like you just turn it on and then all of a sudden it's going to have a, a modified improvement there i don't use frame generation on DLSS. Again, my graphics card doesn't really even support it because it's more for the 40 series. Uh, but again, these are these are mine. Texture resolution. This is one of the ones where it, it will make your clothing, like if you go low on this one, it, it, like we're playing a PS2 game. I know that's a extreme hyperbole, but at the end of the day, if you want your game to actually look good, despite a minimal difference in frames, normal is probably the way to go. 
You could go as low as low, but definitely do not go very low. You're going to be playing Minecraft or something like that. So normal is a good way to go. Texture, filter, anisotropic. I have that to high. Uh, this one doesn't have a huge impact on the actual frames. Depth of field off. This is so we don't get that blurry effect on our gun or the background, um, which that could be a problem just with visibility. Maybe in a campaign or something like that where you want to feel immersed and that's just an effect. But generally, most people just turn this off because in a competitive PvP setting, especially with strict skill-based matchmaking at times, you want to be able to see your target and you don't want any blurriness on your screen. Also, uh, sometimes the depth of field, since it has to put a layer over your screen, it can cause issues where maybe you have frame drops anytime you're having that and that can negatively impact it. So depth of field is just all around turn off. One, another add about the frame generation is even if I did have a 40 series card, I'd probably avoid this because this actually inputs more latency into your overall like system so that you'll feel like there's a little bit more delay because it has to generate those frames. That one is one I would generally avoid for PVP. In the open world, 4K, 8K, whatever, you're doing some crazy game where it's super intensive on graphics and that's what it's really about. The immersion, go for it. The input delays, marginal. You're not gonna actually feel it because it's PVE. When you go into PVP, you, you're gonna notice every millisecond uh, when it comes to that one-on-one. -on -one. So we have depth of field off, detail quality level low. This one's more of a marginal difference as well. You won't notice a ton of differences in game. Particle resolution, we have that one set to low uh, and that one's just generally gonna help. Even though it's gonna look way better, the inconsistency of the frame drops you'll get with explosions trying to animate all the effects can actually negatively impact those frames. So generally we go low on that. Bullet impacts, I have those on, but that one's 100% preference. Persistent effects, I have that completely off. And then shader quality, I have set to low. On demand texture streaming, this one has a marginal difference on anything. And even though it can make your game look slightly better, sometimes it can lead to connectivity issues because you have to download that from the internet while you're playing so it can add to some just connectivity problems. Local texture streaming, quality normal even though it doesn't really matter shadow quality we have this one set to normal you could go to low on this one but normal works perfectly fine and then screen space shadows to low and then everything else is pretty much off or low and that's generally the way you would go because these ones aren't giving you the benefits for what you'd want or they're actively hurting your visibility like this one the volumetric quality you're going to get the shadow and lighting's coming in where it's just not going to be clear visibility where you need to be 100 percent accurate for the view we're going to actually jump in game so you can kind of see how this looks and what these are doing and kind of what my recommendations are. So here we are in Urzikstan and we're going to go through the various settings. First off, we'll go ahead and kind of look at the FOV setting, which is probably one of the most important and it really comes down to preference. Um, the default on this is 80. Uh, if you go ahead and zoom in on this one, it's going to bring all the details in. It'll kind of have that weird effect. Generally, the, the most like consistent area where most people feel, find comfort in is generally going to be between around around 100 up to 120 somewhere in the mix i usually put mine right around 107 on that one's preference the one that else is preference here is affected a lot of people go with that just because it helps with the recoil reduction uh, at least on the visual side if i go ahead and aim down sight here and i go ahead and shoot this weapon you can see when i aim down sight the aim down sight doesn't zoom in that much it kind of just you just shoot straight and that's kind of how that part works if I go ahead and switch this to independent, what it'll do is it'll be like the ADS when I'm an ADFOV. So you'll get much more zoom. So because you get much more zoom, you're able to get a little bit better target acquisition for things that are a little bit further. If a target was right here, they would appear larger on my screen. So it'd be a bigger hitbox essentially because they would be more zoomed in. But for a lot of people, they could feel like they're having a little bit too much zoom and it gives a little bit more visual shake, which can lead to missing shots. So you kind of got to pick what makes most sense. Some people are just used to that. But in the end, I think inevitably most people generally lean towards affected because it gives you that less visual shake. The other part is wide weapon and the way that zooms out on that. And then we got third person view, 90 vehicle view, wide motion blur off, weapon motion blur, film grain off, first camera 50% shake, 50%, so we reduce those entirely. Third person, ADS transition, not really all that important unless you're playing zombies. And then we got the spectator camera. You put it in game, but regardless, if you jump in a vehicle and you're spectating and the person jumps out, it'll switch to the head cam regardless. You'll have to press the right button to swap that out. 
Then we get into some of these other ones that are get really interesting and they have to do with the interface and they're much easier to see in game when you go ahead and do these things. So we go ahead and go over here. We have a couple color customization is a huge one that I definitely recommend playing with, but I'll give you some recommendations and then HUD bounce, which we'll jump into as well. So color customization, what we do is we go ahead and turn these to filter to color filter target both. And then we go ahead and juice that all the way to 100. If we go ahead and turn this off, you kind of see that the colors just aren't as vibrant. When we're looking at the mini map, when we're looking at loot, when we're looking at different things in the distance, whatever it is, it has a certain level of saturation. And then go ahead and put it back to my settings. So we go ahead and put it there to two, and then you get a little bit more saturation, a little bit more color, looks a little bit more lively. Um, and then you can go ahead and adjust the colors to your preference. If you want things to be green, blue, if you have a color blindedness, you can go ahead and change those things as well. Now we get into HUD bounds, which is pretty important, at least in my opinion. You can kind of see how it looks on the menu. It even shows us where it's gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is make this as big as possible and then zoom out and you can see my mini map. You can see even my uh, like placement, if we look in the bottom left, is literally being cut off. I pushed it all the way to the edge. You can kind of see how the, the little icons work with the gun, how far they are. You can see my uh, kills, how many people are in the lobby in the top right. And then on the top left, you can kind of see the different things, how close the mini map is touching literally that top bar. Uh, when it's good if you want your screen to be essentially clear, but a lot of that information is vital information that you should be scanning and looking at regularly. So what you generally do is you can go ahead and bring this in. Uh, more often than not, I just kind of bring it into um, significantly, just so my eyes don't have to pan as far uh, and to look at all the various information. So we go ahead and apply that. And now you can see my entire scoreboard is there with the with the little plates and all that stuff. I can go ahead and look at my gun a little bit closer, how much ammo I have. I can see how many players are left in the lobby. Oh, it's a 1v1. That's important to check that information. And then on the mini map, my eyes don't have to glance nearly as far, even though in person, it's probably only like an inch. That is enough to make a difference in your eyes tracking that saves you micro milliseconds in there where you're able to just scan and look a lot quicker. So I encourage to lower that number just so that can help you out. And it's particularly important when you're playing on a monitor. On a TV, less so, because you're kind of sitting at a distance on a huge TV, not really as big a deal. Couple things I wanted to point out since we're already here, there is a big problem with crashing currently in the game, regardless of mode. The Call of Duty updates has tweeted it out. They, they mentioned, we have actively investigating recent PC crashes and they're working on a plan to fix it. So if you think it's certain settings that could help, Go for it, but realistically, it's a problem that they're trying to solve. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to Tech Guides. This guy was by far the best video maker when it came to the setting stuff. He went way further in detail than is probably necessary, but that's fine if you really want to min-max your build. And this is particularly useful if maybe my settings don't necessarily help you out 100% because the build, it doesn't match mine as close enough. This will break down specifically how you go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and link his channel near the top of the description if you want to check them out and you want a full step-by-step -step guide beyond just copying the setup that I have. Michelle Sport, thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.